So if you're cheering corner, you know, you're definitely the optimistic uh, half of the line. You obviously get very excited by stats, Duncan. And, and often, I, 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 I wonder how they're created. Do you think, oh, there must be a stat around that particular fact and then you go digging? Or, or are they all laid out with some kind of template? How does it work? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of six one half against the other. I mean, often, obviously, you know, we'll watch games really closely and watch what people are talking about and you can shape stuff to that. So if everyone's talking about red cards or whatever, you can kind of look for stuff. But occasionally, you just come across things, um, you know, as you're kind of researching. If I was to sit next to you in a pub, Duncan, what would you what would you stun me with? Which is the one fact you find that has has most visible effect well, on this? Well, there's lots. I mean, one I liked the other you know, week was of all the penalties ever scored in the Premier League, only one has been scored by non-adults. Uh, good stat. And which, <laughs> which is Ma which is Michael Owen. Um, oh. Right at the start of his career, he was the only yeah. Yeah. the only player under 18 to score penalties. But, but to, yeah, to, I mean, to, to get that stat, to have that line, have you got to go back literally and look up every penalty? Um, no, we've got tools that allow us to, to run that sort of thing really quickly. Yeah. Uh, Duncan, pleasure to talk to you. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Duncan Alexander, there, founder, co-founder of Opta Joe. What a lovely day. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day for turning a shuttle upside down and saying, how's that for a Scotsman? Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're allowed to say that. <laughs> Are you allowed for that? <laughs> I don't no. know. You've still been asking me after you've just said it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Well, I can say this one then. Uh, oh, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day for putting a brush handle down Nigel Mansell's trousers and saying, how's that for pole position? <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a doddy one as well. Good. Uh, who, who, did someone send that one in about a Scotsman? Yeah. yeah, they did. Well, I did just, <laughs> that was well, that's just break out. Think of the naughtiest thing I could find and just say it, although it wouldn't be likely. 85058 uh, at BBC Five. Amongst many other things today, we are celebrating the life of the brilliant Kendall. Just gone 4 30. On digital, online, smartphone, and tablet, this is BBC Five Live. The main headlines, a 17-year-old boy has been jailed for more than 10 years for carrying out a series of acid attacks in London. Derek John from Croydon targeted six moped riders on the 13th of July last year, leaving one of them with life-changing injuries. Theresa May will update MPs on the investigation into the nerve agent attack on a former Russian double agent and his daughter in Salisbury. Earlier, the Prime Minister led a meeting of the National Security Council to discuss the evidence. 
Nepalese officials say at least 49 people have died in a plane crash at Kathmandu airport. The Bangladeshi passenger jet veered off the runway and burst into flames while trying to land. And Sir Ken Dodd's widow has described him as a most life-enhancing, brilliant, creative comedian. He's died at the age of 90, just days after marrying his partner of 40 years, Anne Jones. What a beautiful day, says this listener. What a beautiful day for chucking a bucket of whitewash over a seagull and shouting, how do you like it? <laughs> uh, very good. Thank you. BBC Sports on Five Live. How to follow that? I'm Dallas Lloyd with the latest sport. Manchester United midfielder Michael Carrick has announced his intention to retire at the end of the season. The 36-year-old moved to Old Trafford in 2006, but he's been restricted to just four appearances this season because of an irregular heart rhythm. I wanted to finish on my own terms, really, when I could, at least I could decide and not be forced to because of that, so I'm determined to get back to it. I understood I'd, I'd be getting back fit and I'd probably, I don't want to learn, I would be playing as many games as, as, as probably I might have done, but that's, that's something that I understood. And, um, I've just been training hard and been trying to keep fit and managed to play a few games so far and see what happens towards the end of the season. Tonight's commentary game on Five Live sees Premier League leaders Manchester City travel to struggling Stoke. City manager Pep Guardiola has the chance to go 16 points clear of United with a win this evening. But he's not happy that they have to play tonight. Yeah, I don't like to play Monday because the weekend everybody's involved. I mean, the, the, the people there, okay, uh, weekend is over. Uh, uh, this, this week, you no know, more games, we have to play. And, and I don't know if the players can be ready. We're going to work on that these two days. Guardiola wishing it was Sunday. There was commentary on Five Live Sport from 8 p.m. of that match. England selector James Whitaker is to leave his post as part of a major overhaul within the England and Wales Cricket Board. Whitaker will step down at the end of the month as the ECB plans a new approach to picking players for all forms of international cricket. New golf rules announced by the RNA and the US Golf Association will see the penalty for a double hit eliminated. A change in the dropping procedure. Players will now drop the ball from knee rather than shoulder height. The ball is set to come in from the start of 2019. The final day of build up to Jump Racing's Cheltenham Festival has been incident packed as well as more rain at the track. There have been mixed fortunes for the two big names due to clashing Wednesdays at Queen on the Champion Chase. Reporting from Cheltenham, our correspondent on the other side says. Mid morning at the much anticipated Champion Chase showdown, potentially a classic. Top British chaser Altior and Ireland's Duvan looked likely to be on when Duvan was confirmed for the race with Ruby Walls riding. But soon afterwards came news which cast some doubt over Wednesday's hope for encounter. Altior has pus in the foot of one of his front legs and he's undergoing treatment, though his trainer Nicky Henderson says he's hopeful all will be well. It's been a grey, damp day at the race course, the going is heavy, soft in places. Is the place to be for the Cheltenham Festival will be live from Cheltenham from tomorrow.
first of all, I'm really saddened um, as a Telford resident and also as a dad about these reports that go back some 10 or 20 years. Um, in some cases, um, I wasn't a councillor um, and I wasn't even born in some of the cases that were, were, were um, being referred to. But it's shocking and appalling that this is happening in our, in our town. For the last two years since I've been leader, uh, we've cooperated with an offset review, a home office review, a department of education review, a cross party scrutiny review, um, and we want to engage the, um, the home office review. Well, Kathleen Hallisey is a lawyer who specialises in child abuse. Good afternoon to you, Kathleen. You've worked on similar abuse scandals. The scale of this that is now emerging, does it surprise you? Unfortunately, the scale doesn't surprise me, uh, nor does the fact that there's yet another scandal of child sexual abuse in this country. How does it compare to the ones that we will, will be very well aware of, like Rotherham, Rochdale, Oxford? I, I think the, the concerning thing about